Do you know which destination awaits you? Most believe heaven. When questioned, nearly everyone proclaims their own goodness. Lori, would you consider yourself a good person? Yes. I'd consider myself a, a good moral person. I consider myself as a good person. Would you guys consider yourselves good moral people? Yeah. yeah. I would, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, I consider myself a good moral person. I tried myself to be a good moral person according to the teachings of my religion. Uh, for the most part, I like to think so. Most of the time. Uh, would you consider yourself a good moral person? Yes, I do. Yes. I try to be a good person. I think I'm a good person. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, yeah. However, their answers changed drastically when compared to the Ten Commandments. I lied. Yeah, a lot. Used to. Um, uh, I've been a good liar and a bad liar both. I, I, I try not to be a bad liar a lot though. So have you lied? I, I know I do lie. It's just... So what is it? What are you? Liar. Have you ever told a lie? Sure. What does that make you? A liar? <laughs> I've lied. What would that make you? That would make me... Uh, a liar. Right. Uh, have you ever lied? Yeah, definitely. I've lied before. What does that make you? That makes me a liar. Big fat liar. Let me ask you, have you ever lied? Yes. What does that make you? A liar. Have you ever stolen anything? No. Paper supplies, computer no, I software, I haven't stolen Napster anything. music? Yes. Yeah. I bought, yes, I've stolen something before. What would that make you? At that time, it'll make you a thief. So you've stolen some, maybe something small. That, that's a possibility. OK, and someone who steals is a thief. So would you consider yourself a lying thief then? Would you consider yourself a thief? Consider a thief. Yeah, uh, I suppose so. So you're a lying thief? I'm a lying thief. I don't think we could be friends anymore. Uh, well, uh, yeah, uh, I guess you could see it that way. But uh, like you said, it's subjective, and I agree with that. I think it's entirely subjective. Softwares and a lot of... I so, have so listened you, a lot of music so you're stolen. without... Yes, it, it's considered to be a stolen. Would that make you a thief? Yeah. That. Have you ever lied? Yes. What would you call yourself then? <laughs> a bad person. <laughs> if you murder, you would be known as a bad person. Murder? A murderer. If you lie, you would be known as a liar. A... So, have you lied? Yeah. What would you call yourself? A liar. Have you ever stolen anything? Nope. Have you ever cheated on a test? If you've stolen something, what does that make you? <clears throat> Um, I don't really can, I don't know, it's not like I'm going into the store and ripping the software off the shelf um, or putting a gun to somebody and taking the software from them. So the software producer would consider you a, a thief. Okay. The Ten Commandments reveal God's standard for right and wrong. They are so essential that they are the only thing in the entire Bible written by the very finger of God. Have you obeyed God's commandments? The third commandment states, You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Have you ever used your Creator's name as a curse word? If so, then you have likened the one who has given you your life, eyes, family, food, friends, every good thing to a filth word. Have you ever taken the Lord's name in vain? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. What is that called? Blasphemy? Blasphemy. So it, you've blasphemed? Yeah, it's, it's in human nature to error, so it and happens. What would you call someone who blasphemes? Blasphemer. Right. Have you ever uh, t used God's name as a curse word? Yes. 
And would you be, consider yourself a blasphemer then? I guess I am. It's so, just, you would, so you wouldn't consider yourself a blasphemer, even though you say his name in vain? Even though like, that's the definition of blasphemy? Yeah. So I you guess. are a blasphemer. By definition. By definition. Yes, actually I have, because I've taken many tests in my day, and I have said his name in vain. But, um... Do you think that offends him? Do I think that offends him? Yes. Taking the, yeah, a lot. So you would be a blasphemer? Yeah. So you're a lying, thieving blasphemer? Have you ever blasphemed? Let me ask you that. Yes. So you've called your creator a four-letter curse word? Yeah. Yeah, I've uh, been blasphemous at times. Jesus said, You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Have you looked with lust? The Bible even equates hatred with murder. The truth is that we have all broken God's commandments. So would you agree that hatred in the heart is the source of murder? Most likely. Have you ever hated? Yeah. Ten commandments are good. Have you kept them? Yep. Yeah, for the most part. Have you ever lied? I don't lie very often, and when I do, no, like no. you can tell no, I'm no. lying. So. Have you ever lied? <laughs> Have I ever lied? No. <laughs> You've never lied? Not like a big lie or anything. Have you ever stolen anything? Yes. What does that make you? A uh, thief. Have you ever taken God's name in vain? Yes. So you have used your creator's name as a curse word? Yes, but I try not to. But you've done it? Yes. Are you a blaspheming thief? I sure hope not. <laughs> Come on. No. No? Nope. You just told me you stole. Because I don't mean to do these things, though, so... <laughs> so you're an adulterer, a thief, and a blasphemer. <laughs> yes? Yes. Does that concern you? Um, just a little bit. Do you believe there's a heaven or a hell? Yes, I do. So does it concern you? Um, yes, it does. Have you ever been greedy? Yes, that doesn't mean that like I can't suppress that though. Have you ever uh, lied? Yeah, I, I guess yeah. If you yeah. lie, what would that make you? Liar. Being selfish? Being selfish. So yeah. you've been selfish? Yeah. Have you ever looked at a woman lustfully? Yeah. So you've lost it in your heart? You get that desire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're an adulterer at heart? In your heart, no, because you... Because uh, it's a human nature. You think God likes it? No. No. So you've done that? Yeah, in, your, in my heart, but not showing it. Sorry, does yeah. God see our hearts? Yeah, of course. So according to you, you're a selfish, lying adulterer at heart. Is that correct? No. say you're a, a covetous, lying, thieving, adulterer at heart? I would be covetous, lying, thieving at heart, yeah. Does that, is that a fearful thing to consider? Yeah, that's a fearful thing, definitely. Why? Why do you fear your own nature, your own heart? I think that if my nature is so bad and I try really hard, and there's so many people around, and then it's a whole human race full of thieves, liars, envious, greedy people. Have you uh, ever put anything above your creator, as in your own intentions, or maybe money, or your own your family? Anyone but God, have you put before God at any time? No. So you've always put God first? Yes. You wake up in the morning and say, God, I'm going to follow you? <laughs> I don't actually say that, but <laughs> I might heart? be thinking it sometimes. I, I don't know. Okay, so you, sometimes you might have committed idolatry? Yeah, I think I have. So you'd be an idolater? I'm an idolater too. Idolater? Idolater. Yes, I am. Okay. Now, assuming... Wow.
In the beginning, God and man shared in a loving relationship, but man's willful disobedience caused him to be separated from his Creator. God warned that the soul who sins shall die, not just physical death, but also eternal death in the lake of fire. Throughout history, we see man's efforts to reach God always fall short. Adam tried to cover his sin with fig leaves. Cain chose to do things his own way. In Babel, the people sought heaven through their own religious efforts. In Noah's day, the people neglected to heed God's warnings. The Israelites strived to keep the Ten Commandments, but always fell short. And the Pharisees thought good works would get them to heaven, yet no good work can offset sin. By your own admission, you're a lying, thieving, covetous fornicator. Oh my God. On the day of judgment, if God were to judge you by his righteous standards, would you be innocent or guilty? Well, it depends. Because I go to church. By your own admission, you're a lying, adultering, blaspheming idolater. Would you agree with that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> this judge, doesn't sound so good. <laughs> on Judgment Day, if God were to judge you by the Ten Commandments, would you be innocent or guilty based on that standard? Just based on that? Based on His Ten Commandments, which we just went through four of the ten. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Be guilty. Yeah. Would you go to heaven or hell? Well, heaven. Why? Because I would uh, go to church and do confession and all that. If God were to judge me, um, he probably wouldn't let me in, but I think he has to take into account that I've also done other numerous things. That, you know, you, you can't go by, like I said before, a strict set of... So you do could, this, you're getting in. Do so you this, you're not. you can blackmail God and say, don't look at those sins. I donated time at the soup kitchen. <laughs> if you want to call blackmail, sure. I mean... Come on, a good judge on this earth won't let that happen. What do you think the Almighty's going to do? Even a good judge on this earth does it. He, there's, a good judge takes a blackmail? I guarantee you, there's definitely... Then he's not good, is he? Depends on your version of good. No good work can offset sin. Nevertheless, in every generation, God has faithfully pointed sinners to His solution, His gift, the Messiah. By trusting in Jesus, God freely restores the fellowship that was lost in the Garden of Eden. The good news is that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. In His great love, God became a man in the person of Jesus Christ, to fulfill the law and to pay the penalty which our sins demanded. We sinned, yet Jesus died in our place. The Bible declares, God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's why he was put on the cross, to save us, because we're not perfect like he is. Everything you do, you're held accountable for. And God's wrath is just beyond belief, so if he were to hold you directly accountable for what you do, then you'd have no chance of getting into heaven. But, you know, like I said, Jesus died on the cross for my sins, and I put him there. He paid the, the price that I can't, so I'm saved because of that. Jesus came here to die for our sins. John 3, 16, for a lying thief and greedy guy like me is definitely good news. Um, I don't think I realize the news of it every day um, and as often as I should, but you know, if you read it and you believe it, then it's definitely good news. To receive God's gift of forgiveness, Repent of your sins and place your trust in Jesus. If you would like to do that, make Psalm 51 your prayer.